Mr. Blanton. Uh, we will now question the witness under the five-minute rule, beginning with me, followed by the ranking member. We'll then alternate between sides. I now recognize myself for the purpose of questioning our witness. Mr. Blanton, the AOC Inspector General has alleged that you misused your official vehicle in a variety of manners, misled investigators, impersonated a police officer, and violated ethics by hosting private tours of the Capitol when it was closed to the public. The report is very detailed, over 800 pages, and I request unanimous consent that the 10-page executive summary of the IG report be entered into the official record. No objection, so ordered. Mr. Blanton, this report was released three months ago, and yet you have made no public statements prior to today's opening statement denouncing these allegations or explaining these circumstances to the American people. This committee has promised to give you the opportunity to further explain yourself on the record, and I'd like to begin with a series of questions. Are the facts set forward in this IG report true? I would say they're an interpretation, and they had a narrative that was, I would say, predetermined that they, in the 10-page summary report, mm -hmm. where they picked facts to try to justify a narrative. Mm -hmm. Did you, so let me maybe then dive in. Did, you in. did you impersonate a police officer or misrepresent yourself as law enforcement as noted in the 10-page executive summary? No, it, it's, it's actually very, very interesting because when I was subpoenaed to testify when a drunk driver hit my 17-year-old daughter's boyfriend's car, and when I talked to the Commonwealth Attorney, they asked me, are you MPD, uh, Metropolitan Police Department, sorry, <laughs> just so everybody knows. I said no. I said I'm a member of the Capitol Police Board. And I even looked over to my wife and go, I wonder why they would think I was MPD. Now, in that time and in, in there, I sat in the lobby of the courthouse in Fairfax County for approximately two hours. The only thing I did was show the Nest Cam video of the vehicle striking my daughter's vehicle, my daughter's boyfriend's vehicle to the Commonwealth Attorney. RIG knew that, but they chose to characterize it that I was sitting in pretrial meetings as well as judicial proceedings, which I was in none of that. I was in the lobby the entire time of the capital of the of the courthouse in Fairfax County. Thank, thank you for providing additional color on that point. Maybe I can, maybe I can follow up with a with an additional question here. And you, you referenced it in your opening statement regarding uh, private use of the of a government vehicle. Did you use the the government vehicle for personal purposes? I, I I wouldn't call it private use or personal use. As I alluded to, the 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 job is twenty four seven. Being able to respond to Congress in the Supreme Court requires me to be in a state that I could get back to Congress at any time. And so, if I'm going to say a hypothetical here, if I am somewhere which would require me to travel in a personal vehicle in an opposite direction of the Capitol to pick up my government vehicle, that Congress appropriated so that I could respond back and use the equipment in the vehicle to communicate with my staff, to communicate with the Capitol Police, and to communicate with the Capitol Police Board. If I had to do that and then go back to Congress, that just delays the reaction of my agency and my leadership to our agency to the entire Capitol campus and frankly puts everybody at risk. Mm -hmm. So during the period of time from August 8th to August 23 in 2020, uh, while you were on leave from the AOC, I believe for a, a family vacation to either South Carolina or Florida, was that the, the purpose for using that vehicle at that time? So I, I used that vehicle, to be honest, because I was under the frank assumption that I had to use that vehicle because one of the, one of the unique things about the vehicle is Regardless of where I am, I am in communications with the Capitol Police Board. While I was there in Florida and in, in 
South Carolina. I was attending meetings because at that time everybody was uh, in, in a virtual world. So I was, I was working. It was more likely an, an, an alternate work site. Also, I took care in when I planned my trip to be in a location that had the opportunity for military airlift should an emergency happens for me to be able to get back to the Washington DC area. Thank you for that information. I would note that the policy defines HCW transport as quote, the use of an AOC motor vehicle to transport employees between their homes in places of work. This includes the use of an AOC motor vehicle solely for the purpose of supplementing part or all of the employees commute. I'll ask just one final question on this point. Uh, I know we have a lot of members that, that want to also be asking questions. On January 6th, uh, a date obviously uh, of significance here on the Capitol Hill, uh, did you utilize uh, your government-issued vehicle to come to the Capitol? I absolutely utilized my government vehicle, and I'm glad to be able to make this point uh, to everybody. That vehicle was served as AOC's mobile command post during the, the events of January 6th. I was in that vehicle listening to police radio on my computer and on my phone directing AOC personnel in our support of Congress during that event. But did you drive the vehicle? No, I did not drive the vehicle back. It would have been not prudent to drive the vehicle back because there would have been next to no way to get onto this campus at that time with the number of people that were there. And that actually serves the, that actually demonstrates the purpose of why the vehicles that AOC, the House and Senate Sergeant at Arms have is because they, because we are able to operate remotely and be able to be in command and control of all of our staff because of that vehicle. And that is also why it is prudent that that vehicle exists and the vehicle is with me. Because for example, hypothetically, if I'm at Home Depot and something happens, then I would have to, th there would be a delayed response to this, to the Capitol complex. Well, I, I, I'm cognizant of the time, I appreciate your willingness uh, to provide additional details uh, as, a res as it relates uh, to the Inspector General's <laughs> report. I will note uh, my frustration that has taken you so long to come forward publicly uh, to address this uh, because the concern here um, is that while you're engaging here with us today, um, we want to make sure that we're reestablishing uh, the strength and integrity of the leadership of the uh, architect of the Capitol uh, writ large. Cognizant of the time, I will uh, now conclude my remarks.